Hey guys, I am so excited that you guys joined me tonight. Uh, we are talking about a pretty exciting topic, and the reason that I chose to have this be for Silvers and Above is because once you become a Silver Ambassador, that means that you have started to build a team. You have at least three people that you have personally sponsored, and you're now working on what we call duplication which is helping those people to go silver as well. If any of you have watched Sheila Medina's video about the power of three, I would definitely recommend that you watch it if you haven't, but it goes through how you sponsor three people and then you help your team do the same. It sounds very simple and it actually is very uh, a simple process. Uh, the hard part is actually getting people uh, to be as excited as you are sometimes. The topic of tonight's call is coaching through and not around. One of the things that Plexus is doing right now is they are pouring a lot of resources into the training of ambassadors. And that is how we got the beautiful success kit that we have. If you don't have that success kit, uh, definitely try to work with your uplines to get your hands on one. Every single new person that's joining the business is getting that success kit when they purchase their $99 welcome kit. And I can tell you that if you didn't purchase that, you've missed out. And so just that success kit alone is worth the $99. To me, the products that you get in that kit are a bonus. Um, and so the company has poured into us through the success kit. And they also have called what they're calling leadership excellence training. And they're having all of the new Emerald ambassadors go out to corporate for four days for a training. And they started that back in February. And so everyone who went Emerald or above, anybody who went Emerald prior to February of 2016, they had big waves of jewels coming out to different cities all over the, uh, the country to do these excellent, uh, leadership excellence trainings. And then now it's as you become an Emerald, you go out to the training. So I was there. The really neat thing about the training that I went to is Melissa had not gone yet to her uh, leadership training. So Melissa was there, Micah was there, Nikki was there. So there were a lot of people from our team, even Haley DeJoc was in the training. So it was neat that we had a lot of our upline that was there to get to experience it, uh, all of us together. We, I say we, I really didn't know what to expect when I went out there. I've been to a lot of different corporate trainings and you're sort of like, yeah, yeah, I've heard all this. It's sort of rah, rah. And you leave thinking, well, I mean, I guess I, you try to figure out something that you gained from it because you don't want to feel like you wasted your time away from your family. I can honestly say it's probably the only corporate training that I have ever been to where I felt like a changed person when I left. And it was hardcore training. I mean, we were there from eight in the morning until five o'clock in the afternoon or later learning about leadership. And one of the topics that we talked about, which is the topic of tonight's call is, coaching your team through your downline and not around. And you might be thinking, what does that mean? So I'm actually going to use a live example on our team. And I always uh, say I only pick on my family members and or my husband. And so tonight I am going to use my mom as an example. And I know there are several of you who have siblings or who have parents. Uh, that are in the business. It's a little bit different when you've sponsored your husband because they can sometimes be a silent partner in the business. And most of you know that my husband, Andy, has only uh, recently become more involved with the business. So it's a little bit different when it's your spouse. But I'm going to use my mom in, as, as an example. And I'm going to show you and give you examples of what I have done. And now, if I had been to the Jewel training prior to my mom joining my team, how I would do it differently. So here's a little bit of the backstory. My mom wanted to support me in my Plexus business. She became a customer. She did love the product. And she and my stepdad were going to 
continue to take the products. And so I signed her up as an ambassador. She knew that she wanted to support me. She knew that she was going to take her products every month. She and my stepdad, and they both felt great. They did tell some of their friends. And as a result of that, my mom signed up a couple different customers. Now that was great because I told her, hey, if you get a couple customers, that will help pay for your products. And that's what it did. She started receiving a commission and she had customers. Now, I worked with her customers directly. I did not involve my mom. I answered their questions. I had them come directly to me when they needed anything. And they also started seeing great results. And one of those people was Grace Carr. So many of you may know Grace. She is the lady that makes the beautiful pottery. And several of you have her um, pots that say plexus on them and that you may keep your plexus slim in. I love mine. But Grace was a friend of my mom. And she wanted to become an ambassador after I had spoken with her. And so she did sign up as an ambassador. And then Grace started talking to folks. So I just worked with Grace directly. My mom had said she really wasn't necessarily interested in building the business. And so I had conversations with Grace. I coached Grace. I answered all her questions about the products. We had calls on a regular basis together. Grace signed up her daughter. Grace signed up several people and is now actually a gold ambassador and has a gold downline. So the story is still great. Uh, Grace thrived and I sort of took her under my wing as my level one and I coached her and helped her and helped her and I'm still working with Grace on a regular basis. Now, that is an example of coaching around someone in your downline and not through. And I didn't think there was anything wrong with that. I had watched Sonia Dudley's um, training video on YouTube about not getting an attitude and hey, if your downline wants to work with you, your upline, um, great, you know, don't ever have an ego and and let's say, um, you know, so Grace wanted to work with me and my mom wasn't upset about that. She's like, yeah, I don't want to build a business, whatever. And I never talked to my mom really. Every once in a while, she'd say, hey, what's going on with Grace? I'd tell her, but that was it. And so now I want to talk to you about what we learned and what I would like for our team to start putting in place um, on our Lexus or Bus team. And that is coaching through and not around. So if I could go back, this is what that would have looked like. My mom would have said, hey, my friend Grace wants to sign up as a customer. And I would have said, well, would you like for me to talk to Grace with you? And we would have scheduled maybe a three-way conversation to involve my mom. Now, if my mom said, I don't want to be involved at all. I just want to take products and if she wants to buy them, great, but I don't want to be involved at all. Then I would ask my mom, hey, would you just take two minutes and get on a three-way call with Grace and I so that you can give her permission to work with me directly? What that does is it allows Grace to know that my mom is involved and that she's the one making the handoff to me. Now, going forward, then I can have direct conversations with Grace and I would tell my mom, hey, I'll continue to keep you in the loop and as you know, every weekly, monthly, however often I talk to Grace, I'll let you know. And if you ever decide that you want to be involved in those conversations, you can let me know. Fast forward, when Grace decided that she wanted to become an ambassador, I would have gone back to my mom and asked the same question. Hey, Grace actually wants to become an ambassador and she wants me to coach her through that process and give her some tips and answer her questions. Would you like to be involved on those coaching calls? That conversation is going to go one of two ways. The first way is my mom could say, uh, yeah, I think I would like to be involved on those calls. And I would say, great, we're going to talk. You know, we, we would get a convenient time for the three of us. We would do it either through Zoom or in person or through just a conference call, Google chat, however that looks. And I would still do some of the coaching, but my mom would then have the opportunity to see me coach, to hear me coach ask questions if she had any questions and be involved to the level that she wanted to be involved and when she was ready i may pass grace off and my mom can do coaching with her if that ever happened 
the other way that that would have gone is my mom would have said, no, I really am not interested in building the business. You can coach with her directly. Um, and I would say, okay, do you mind getting on just a two minute three way phone conversation so that you can let Grace know it's time for her to continue to work with me directly? And then any time that you're ready, I would love for you to join us on those calls. Think about maybe someone, if you have this situation, and if you don't, you probably will in your future as you grow your business, where you've had the opportunity, but because you knew that they didn't want to build the business, you didn't want to like offend them or you didn't want to bother them. And so you just started working directly with their downline. You may have had people that joined the business just like my mom and said, I don't want to be really involved. You go ahead. However, if my mom had on the off chance said, you know, I will sit in on one of those calls. Who knows if that could have changed her mind about wanting to build the business or given her some type of inspiration or insight into the business that she is really being robbed of because I didn't ask for her permission to do that. And that is very duplicatable, guys. Even though my mom's given me permission, it would have been very helpful for Grace to hear my mom say yes. I am not interested in building the business right now, but I do want you to work directly with Kelly. It also edifies me and it lets Grace know that my mom didn't just want her to sign up to be an ambassador and then drop her and say, because that's sort of, a, it comes off maybe even a little bit selfish. So then my mom can say to Grace, yeah, Kelly is an Emerald ambassador. She's really building a strong team. At this point, I'm really not wanting to build the business but you're going to learn a lot from her. I give her full permission to work with you. How much better of a handoff would that have been versus me just telling Grace, oh yeah, yeah, my mom's not doing it. I'll just work with you. Um, and I'm not saying that's exactly what I said, but virtually that is what I said. So that is how you coach through and not around. If you have people that are your level twos, your threes, fours, fives, sixes, on down that are reaching out to you directly and they are asking you to counsel with them. You need to reach out to however many downline there are in between you and them. Um, I, I can see Erin Martin's face on, her, on here, so I'm just going to use her as an, as an example. She is sponsored by Casey, and then Erin has, has sponsored her mom. So let's say uh, her mom, Lisa, reached out to me directly and said, hey, Kelly, I really uh, click with you. Maybe we have the same profession. We don't, but I'm just using that as an example. Um, I think I would love to sit down and talk to you and pick your brain a little bit. That is absolutely fine, but what I would need to do is reach out to Casey and Aaron and say, hey, Lisa has reached out to me. She feels like we have some type of connection. She wants to ask me some questions. I'd love to involve you in that conversation. And if both of them said, well, I'm not really interested, then we would all get on a call and they would let Lisa know it's time for her to, to work with me directly. So for the people that I can see your faces, is that clear? Does everybody understand that? And understand how that makes it a very duplicatable and smooth process going forward. And you do that every time. Now, if Lisa said, I want to talk to you every Monday for the next six weeks, I don't have to get permission from Aaron and Casey every Monday. Um, it's for that, whatever that predetermined period of time is. But if she came back to me two months later and asked me the same question, I'm going to go through that same process again. Okay. The second thing I want to talk about tonight is how you prepare to be on a coaching call with your upline. The first thing is that you are prepared to be on the call uh, with your upline. So whatever that is, if it's a weekly check-in, if it's a monthly uh, kickoff message with you and your upline about planning for the month, get clear expectations from your upline prior to the call. For example, at the beginning of the month when I coach my level one, or not even just my level ones, any of my runners that I have regular calls with, I want to know what was their PD that they ended with last month. I want them to be able to tell me how many people their team added of those uh, groups that were added, how many were already commission qualified. I want to know what their points goals are for the upcoming month and how they're going to get there. Do they have any contests that they're running? 
Are they going to be following a, a daily method of operation? If so, what is it? And that is, those are all things that you have prepared for your upline prior to the call, not while you're on the call that you're scrambling and you're pulling all that up on your computer, but prior to the call. Now, guys, I'm giving you all of these suggestions. These are all things that we talked about in the dual training, and every single thing that they talked about stung just a little bit. I'm like, oh, yeah, I've done that. Oh, yeah, I haven't done that. Or, oh, yes. But one thing I can tell you is that Melissa and I, out of all the jewels that were at the training and when we went, um, we were the only ones that had a regular coaching call. And they actually had us stand up in front of the group and do a role play. So I was super proud to be on Melissa's team and know that she's already coaching us in that way. So when I say that we are on the best team in all of Plexus, like we really are. We really have the best leadership in the whole company. So be prepared for your call, whatever that means, and get those clear expectations from your upline ahead of time. And a coaching call should not last really longer than 15 minutes. Your first coaching call may last a little bit longer while you're still sort of fleshing out what the expectations are. But after that, a coaching call should only last for 15 minutes. And during that 15 minutes, you're only talking about what the coaching subject is. If it's planning, if it's working through an issue, if it's asking questions, whatever it is, you're not getting on the call and saying, hey, how are you? How was your day? Because, not because you don't care, but because some people can't, you know, some people ask like a runaway train. So if you keep those first 15 minutes of the call just about business, then afterwards you can talk about other things. Um, actually, in the training, they suggested that after that 15 minutes is over, that you actually hang up the phone. And if you want to talk about personal things, then you call back. I mean, so you make it a completely separate phone call. I don't know if I'm always going to take it that strictly, but Sometimes that can be helpful because sometimes you have to say, I only have 15 minutes. I do want to hear about your son's baseball game. Let's schedule another time just to talk and be friends. Because you are friends with your downline. I mean, I, I, I get that. Um, and Aaron is asking me, at what point do you want to start those calls with your ambassadors? I think once you're a silver ambassador and you have a team, you need to be working with your team. And you're going to be working with your team that's running. Never apologize for running with your runners. And that's probably going to be 20% of your team, uh, 10 to 20% of your team. If you only have three people and they're all super, super excited, work with all three. Now that I have um, about 60 level ones, I probably have five to seven people that I'm coaching at one time and I'm doing individual calls with them on a weekly basis. So it's still that average number. Um, the second thing you need to do for your call is be on time for your call. One of the quotes that uh, was quoted during the training was, when my time is as valuable as your time, then you'll be on time. And I was like, whoa. So I like wrote that down because it's so true. And I am one of the worst. I mean, I, to say, I give sort of a nebulous start time. Like I'll say, let's meet around 12 o'clock because I think, oh, that gives me about a 10 minute leeway. Well, that's not fair to the person that's there at 12 o'clock. And so one of the things they recommended in the training is instead of, um, I can also see Lori and Charles. If I have a call with Lori and it's at 12 o'clock on Monday, and it's every Monday at 12 o'clock, she is going to call me. Even though I'm the one that's doing the coaching, that shows that she is holding herself accountable to the time and she's going to call me. And she's going to call me right at 12 o'clock. Now, do things come up? Yes. Have there been times when I've had to, at 11.59, for example, in, in my call with Melissa is at 12 o'clock, message her and say, oh my gosh, my dog just got sick or my kids just called me from school. Yes, that happens. But if I call Melissa consistently at 12.05, 12.07, 12.10, Melissa sort of has the three strikes in your out rule. 
um, after you have shown her that you're not ready to be consistent, what she says, and again, I'm going to duplicate this as well as, hey, listen, I really want to work with you. Your business is very important to me, but it can't be more important to me than it is to you. And when you're ready to take this coaching seriously, then I'm going to be here for you. Just let me know when that is. So being on time for your call is important. And lastly, when you call, and again, something that I've been super guilty of, when you have that call with your upline, you're sitting at your desk in front of your notes. Now, if you're traveling or whatever, again, there can be exceptions, but I was the worst about scheduling a coaching call with some of my level ones, Casey, Barry, Amy, and being in my car and taking that call. What does that say to them? That says that I'm, obviously, I'm more focused on the driving than I am listening to them, and I can't take notes. And part of the coaching is that when I'm asking them those questions, that I'm writing down the answers. I don't need to know what your numbers are just for the heck of it. I need to know so that when you say, these are the things that I'm going to do to hold myself accountable next week. When we talk next week, I need to be able to look back at my notes and ask you, did you do those things? I need to be able to follow up and check in. And if you're giving me all the things that I've asked for and I'm driving down the road, telling my kids to be quiet and, you know, trying to figure out what way I'm going, I'm not really paying attention to what you're saying. And so if you're going to give me the courtesy of scheduling a time and preparing for the call, then I need to do the same as the coach to be ready to sit down, listen to what you're saying and take notes. You also need to be taking notes on the other side of that coaching call so that they're productive and you're ready to take what you've learned in coaching and take it and apply it. The same thing for the coach. The next time we talk, I'm able to ask you a specific questions based on what we've come up with as a plan in coaching uh, to make sure that it's working and if we need to tweak it. So with that, that's all I wanted to talk about tonight, talking about how to coach through and not around and how to prepare for a coaching call uh, as the coach and then also as the person being coached. Is there any other questions that anybody wants to put through chat? If not, we'll go ahead and wrap up the call. I'll give you guys just a second. As always, uh, many of you, if not all of you, have uh, my or have the ability to send me a message through Facebook, and I'm listed as Kelly K E L L Y. Knowles, K-N-O-W-L-E-S, Jan, J-A-N. You can send me a, a direct message through Facebook, and I'm usually very good about getting back. And I will be posting this call on my YouTube channel as a public post, and I'll also post it in the Lexus or Bus group uh, as soon as that is ready. Um, hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Hopefully you'll be able to use this as your team uh, continues to grow. And if you have questions, let me know. Love you guys and have an awesome rest of your night. Bye.